Today on Performance TV, we check out a radio with a great sound and classic look. And is this the future of hybrid engines? Let's find out. Welcome to this week's Performance TV. Let's say you have a nice classic car like our 65 Mustang convertible that we have with us today, but you want to have much better sound and all of the great things that go along with the new technology. Well, you can have that with custom auto sound and not have to worry about messing up your dash or the look of the inside of the car because that's what custom auto sound is all about. They've been doing this since 1977. And you can see we have the old ugly AM radio out of the vehicle and we're getting ready to install all the latest technology and it is going to look awesome by the time it's done. You know what, we're talking about 300 amps. You're able to put in all of your Bluetooth stuff, the microphone and everything comes along with this radio. And you can even have your auxiliary input so you can see right here on the front, which will control auxiliary one and two. If you want to put in a CD changer in the, in the car somewhere, all of your connections are on the back. You can also have your USB and that's what's really cool. And on a convertible like this, well, you've only got a place for one speaker. We also have that as well from Custom Auto Sound. We're gonna be able to put this right in the dash area without messing anything up. You wanna be able to tailor it to the color? You can do that too. Seven different colors and so much more. And you know what? I think we need to get this in and Dave is gonna start the install. I've already got my speaker and it drops in really nice and easy. All I had to do is take off my grill right here, unscrew the old one, the new one pops right in. So I've done a couple of things to get myself prepared before I install this. As always, when you're working with electricity, you always disconnect your battery first. Even though I've installed plenty of these over the years, I always like to go over my instructions first and I've got all my tools set up. Now, I always take care of my electrical first. If you install your radio and then try to get back there, it's going to be impossible. I've also trial fitted the radio in so that I was sure to get my important back brace set up. Now, on the radio, when you're going to install it, I'm going to put a few spacers on here. I've got my spacers here. I'll pull these back. I'll make sure that my wires didn't touch anything that are sharp edges, anything moving. And obviously, I've already taken up the glove box door. I've taken out the glove box. It simply folds out and pulls out. I've taken out my ashtray, even though I didn't actually need to, but you might need to on yours. We've got the air conditioning system here. And that makes it tough to go in from the bottom. So I like to come in from the side. You got a washer and I've got a half inch nut right here. All of the tools I need for this are all simple tools that everybody should already have in their box. I didn't need anything special for this. When I tighten this down, I am not going to use a ratchet. If I over tighten these, I will break them. So I'm just gonna get these nice and snug, but I'm not gonna get crazy about it. I'm gonna be sure that I hook up my back brace. Now I can plug in my wires. I've got easy access to my other accessory plugs. This here will plug in with RCA connectors. I can even hook up my woofer, no problem, nothing special. I make sure that my radio is off before I plug in my electrical and then I don't over tighten and I get my back strap on there. So my installation is basically done. I can put my knobs on here. I can hook up all my speaker wires, any of my accessories that I want, CD, microphone. You can see it's nice and easy. I've done plenty of these. Custom Auto Sound has been doing this for almost 40 years. They figured out all the problems for you. No cutting, no welding, no problem. Hey Dave, let me go ahead and get the power hooked back up for you. Cool. These quick connectors make it pretty easy. All right, there we go. 
you got everything double checked power here we go oh that's sweet custom auto sound comes up across nice yeah we can do seven different colors on that too that's what here's our radio station oh yeah you can really tell the difference wow that speaker. yeah that does make a big difference you know and now we're going to have all the technology in our classic car and it looks absolutely fantastic in the dash. You want to find out what Custom Auto Sound has for your classic ride? Just go to their website at customautosound.com. We have so much more coming up on Performance TV right after this. <laughs> Performance TV is being brought to you by Spray 9. One product, nine uses. Z-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Hotwire Auto, we do the work so you can play. And by I Did It, steering column specialists. If you can dream it, we can build it. Welcome back to Performance TV. Man, do we have one really cool late 50s Pontiac in here with us today. And pretty cool looking dude too. Here, Johnny Magic. Johnny, tell us a little bit about your car that you brought in for us today. Yeah, you know, it's a 50 style Pontiac Chieftain. And, you know, we put the car together like uh, before the SEMA show last year uh, in a scramble and, you know, to make it to the show to show off some technology. It really wasn't about the car as much as it was the technology under the hood. We, we learned a lot about the car and, and, you know, thanks to Rock Auto, I mean, they were our savior, the only place we could find parts for an older vehicle like this. Can you give me a little idea what, what you got going on here? <laughs> What is well, this? this is what happens when you touch high voltage. Oh. You end up with one of these. Okay. Now, I was building a car for a singer and songwriter, Neil Young, about seven, eight years ago uh, called Link Bolt. And during that time, you know, I was building this car. He wrote this song about me called Johnny Magic. Well, I decided one day we were doing YouTube videos. I'm like, you know what? We just need to have a character. And why not just use Johnny Magic? So we... So, this is Johnny Magic. Here he is. So here he is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. In all his glory. <laughs> all his, what do we have? This looks like an electrical motor. Simplified things. It is an electrical motor. This one's made by HPV. They manufacture an AC induction electric motor, and this one's about 50 kilowatts, which is equivalent to about 150 foot-pounds of torque. But what happens when you put this on an application like that, now you're going to apply additional energy to that vehicle, kind of like a uh, supercharger, but I call it a reverse supercharger because what it does, it increases 150 foot-pounds of torque, which is equivalent to 150 horsepower on that vehicle. Wow. White knuckle, small in your face power, but at the same time, it reduces emissions up to 50%. Yeah, 50%. exactly. That's a wow. big number. It's craziness. Especially when we, th we think about, you know, what kind of power it takes to move a bus like this. I mean, yeah. this, this isn't a light car. No. Yeah, exactly. And the cool thing about it is the byproduct is, I call it the bolt-on hybrid kit. Okay, okay, so with this system, you can increase your horsepower, you can reduce your emissions, and also cut your fuel consumption in half. Man, it looks relatively simple to be able to install it. Oh, I mean, we have, the, we have the motor, you know, you have your pulley. It looks like you've got a, a nice bracket so we can install it. What motor do we have in our Pontiac? Yeah, and this car uh, actually is running, uh, believe it or not, that's out of an H2 Hummer. It's what they call the uh, LS version. It's the six liter. Okay. Uh, you know, we've engineered this kit to fit all the LS lines. So whether you have uh, a Denali, an Escalade, a Suburban, a Tahoe, a 57 Pontiac or a Hummer, you know, this system's already engineered to fit that application. Okay, to fit the, the, the LS motors. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the, basically the difference between, you know, any of those applications is the, the vehicle itself. The motor's the same, you know, that same style of engine. Okay, so once we get this installed, you know, what we, we see here, there's got to be some battery someplace. Yeah, you know, there's three key components to the system. One, you have the electric motor we spoke of, and then there's a controller that interfaces the electric motor, and then the back side of it is the batteries. And, you know, the batteries that we use in this is you know they're just a simple EV style battery they're called a lithium ion phosphate battery these are manufactured by Calb they're 3.2 volts each and of course you have a num number of them to get you at 120 volts so you just basically work them all together yeah yeah it becomes a pack and this packs about a 10 kilowatt battery pack and you know the system has different modes and one mode that I really like the best is this right here this is the J135 whatever so your industry standard charge port that you see on most of your electric vehicles and your your hybrid vehicles you know you you don't have to have this charge station in order to charge the car because on board of the car is a charger. Okay. So all you have to do is basically plug this into an extension cord, charge your car up next morning, get up, go drive, big smile on your face, do some donuts, whatever you want to do, 
get back home, plug it in, and the cool thing about it is now you run 75 cents equivalent gallon fuel with electricity. Right, so fuel savings plus a whole lot more horsepower. Absolutely. Okay, so getting back to the to the batteries, how long, you know, say, uh, would a normal charge with a system like this, how, how long can we you go? You know, it's probably about a two to three hour charge on a 110. Well, most people don't drive more than 60 miles a day. They get up, they go to work and stuff like that. So in that mode, we call that the city mode. So you just click it in city mode, you charge up the vehicle in the morning, you unplug it, you go do your thing, you come back home in the evening, plug it back in, you know, now, however, if you decided to go outside your range, let's just say uh, you go outside that 60 miles, the system just reverts into hybrid mode. So at that time, it just applies waste energy associated with deaccelerating. You know, the vehicle, when you slow down, instead of you using the brakes, this electric motor becomes a generator and recaptures that waste energy associated with it to better reuse it later when you get ready, you're at a stop sign, you get ready to take off, right. then that energy is applied to offset your main fuel consumption. Perfect, but you know what? We are going to get this installed because I'm anxious to be able to get this out on the road. Well, we're gonna bring Dave in to do that. We'll have that and more just minutes away here on Performance TV. Performance TV coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. All right, I'm good. How you doing, Johnny? Got it just in. Great. Welcome back to Performance TV. We're installing our e-charger. I've got Johnny Magic here with e-charger systems, and he's helping me getting this in. What do I got to do next? Yeah, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is uh, line the uh, serpentine belt. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that on. All right. If you could tighten that up. Okay. It's got a centric on there, so it'll just it'll basically uh, set the, the proper tension. I got you. For you. So and there now you I go. can really see how this is attached to the crankshaft itself. Yeah, exactly. You know, the whole beauty of the concept is the simplicity, and, and now we have this electric motor that's supplying energy to the direct crankshaft of the engine that's underneath this hood. And of course, this choice engine is what they call a compression or an ice motor. And you know, now we have this electricity is being supplied to that crank so that this motor doesn't have to do as much work as it used to. I see. I mean, next we got to hook up our electricity wires. All right. I'm going to let you do that because I don't think I can pull off that here, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, right now there's no afro that you'd get by doing this. The system is dead, but uh, the phasing is very important. This is a three-phase AC uh, induction motor. So, uh, you know, just follow the instructions. Pretty simple. Yeah, it's a lot easier to install than a turbo or a supercharger. Oh, absolutely. You know, you only have like three bolts holding this whole electric motor onto the gas engine. And, uh, you know, you got a few wires to, hang, to, to connect mechanically, which we're doing that right now. And then the, the other interface is, uh, you know, basically plug and play other than the, the tensioner. And I see you have a control box here. How, how does that work? So the control box supplies the energy uh, associated with what makes the electric motor work. So how it... It's kind of a simple concept. What you have is a controller that's interfaced to the existing engine that you have right here, and it's done through what we call the OBD2 port. It measures uh, throttle position, uh, intake, uh, and barrel. And from there, it makes a determination of how much energy is actually applied to the electric motor to help the gas engine do its job. And I'm not building up heat like I am from the turbo? Nope. You know, and one of the beauties of the system, of course, obviously, is the great fuel efficiency and performance that you get out of it. But second, secondary to that is just think about it. I mean, now this electric motor is helping this, this engine do its job. This engine here works less, which makes it last a whole lot longer. Hey, guys, it looks like you're getting pretty close there. Just got a little more to wrap up and we can get it on the road. <laughs> yep, we're okay. so close. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? You guys wrap that up. And in the meantime, take a look at this. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Evaporus question and answer session. Our question is from Colin. I ordered a vintage oil can on eBay with quite significant rust on it. It is from the late 1930s and quite fragile. Would this product work on the can? Yes, Evaporus will help on rusty cans, things that are painted. You want to keep the paint looking good? Mm -hmm. Let's go over to the workshop and let me show you how it works. Here we've got some painted items that have rusted collector's type things. Yeah. Uh, you can see this uh, this old gasoline filler can. Once you de-rust it, you can take it, 
I'm very careful when I do paint because you paint, don't want to scrub it necessarily. You don't want to scrub it. Sometimes that paint is just a little bit loose, so mm -hmm. I just kind of pat it so Put it some stays. Water. Yeah, so it stays in in place. Yeah. And then I want to pat it dry. Dry. Okay. Yeah, just really not. You want to scrub it all. Even Especially if, on the antique paints that are out there, you don't want to scrub them because they do get a little bit loose from the surface. Sometimes. But once it, once it dries, they'll they'll stick right back mm -hmm. down. So mm -hmm. you see, you go from something like that to that. Mm -hmm. Here's another example. This old truck was solid rust on one side, and we yep. de-rusted it. And when you just carefully pat it dry, the original paint stays with it. Yeah, now you can see what color it is. That's super cool. Yeah. And it, uh, old signs, license plates, mm -hmm. those types of things are really fun to do, yeah. There's even a, motorcycle gas tank, the, the paint on the outside, it's safe on that, or even just any kind of antique can or item that you have sitting around. Yeah. You can find a rust at retailers nationwide. And if you have any other questions, please visit our website, or you can also look at our store finder to find a retailer near you. Well, we've got everything installed, and as promised, we are out on the road giving this a road test. Now, Johnny, I'm seeing a, a different type of gauge down here. What's going on? Yeah, so what you're looking at down here is actually the only gauge that uh, controls the whole system. It actually tells you how much amps that you're pulling. So, for example, like right now, we're on the highway, but we're in city mode. You can see we're already pulling 150 amps, and of course, getting ready to run over a car up here, but uh, we're going to slow that down a little bit. But So, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch this into highway mode. Okay. Now on highway mode, you'll see there's a few different things going on. You see that we're not using as much energy of the pack as we were, and you'll actually see that there's a negative number there. So as we're cruising down the highway, what happens is now the, uh, the system, the e-charger system, is actually triple charging the battery pack uh, under a no-load situation. You can, you can go past the limitations of the plug-in and it automatically just goes in the hybrid cool to find out about. I really appreciate you coming in and, and showing us all this stuff. And if you want to find out more about the eCharger system, well, simple as that. Go to eChargerSystem.com. You know what? We've got a whole lot more of Performance TV. We'll have that right after this. Performance TV is being brought to you by Lizard Skin. Spray your way to a cooler, quieter ride. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. This week's Gen Y Towing Tip of the Week, we're going to be talking about versatility and reliability, and we really need that kind of thing when we're towing all this stuff. Tracy, who's a national sales rep for Gen Y, Tracy, you can tow all kinds of stuff with your hitches. Yes, Kathy, you can. The thing with Gen Y hitch is we want dependability, we want versatility, and because of that, we reduce liability. A lot of people don't think about, they think, well, I've got a two and five sixteenth inch ball, my trailer's two and five sixteenths inch ball. I've got a truck. It's got a receiver. I'll back up and I'll hook up and I'll tow. They don't think about the fact that there's weight ratings to each component. So what we did at Gen Y is with our two and five sixteenths inch ball, we're rated at 16,000 pounds on a two inch, which up until we came onto the scene was That's unheard quite, of. That's quite a lot. On the bottom side, I've got my two inch ball. So I have the versatility of those two on one. Then I also have the inch and seven eighth. There's still a few trailers out there left with the inch and seven eighth inch ball. So what we did to make it even more versatile, instead of putting the standard tri ball where you have three balls and then that's all you can use it for, we have put a hole in here. So you pull one pin, you pop it out, you turn this flat, and now you just bolt this in there and you've got your inch and seven eighth. But if you're done with inch and seven eighth, you can take it out, you can turn this back up, and now you could put a clevis or something else on there, it's just making it a lot more versatile. There you go. Durability, versatility, and so much more. Find out what Gen Y has for you. Go to their website, genyhitch.com. Welcome to this week's Clamp Tight Close-Up. Here's the situation. You're at the racetrack on a Saturday, ready to go, and a hose clamp breaks. Nikki, how do I fix this easily with your tool? Well, let me show you. 
We're going to take the wire. We're going to put a wire nut at the end of it. That really helps us guide the wire through the loop when we're fixing it. So take the intake, feed it through. You're going to give it a nice good pull to pull that nice and tight. And now we're going to do it one more time, right up through the center of the first one, right up through the loop. Then I go through and make sure I'm not twisted or crossed or anything, because you want a nice even seal all the way around. So let me pull that tight, just like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the wire nut off, because we're going to put the tool on. Okay. So now take the tool, feed it right up through there, then you're going to wrap it up and around each of the pegs, twist it together, and then we're going to put that loop in that notch and start turning. Well, that's pretty easy. It is actually. So you just keep turning it, and as you go around, you can actually pull these in a little bit tighter. Make them look nice and Make neat. Make them look nice and neat. Just keep turning. One of the things I really like about this is it both pushes one end while it's pulling the other. Absolutely. So it's giving you that nice 360 degree even seal. So like with a regular hose clamp, you're going to have a flat spot. Mm -hmm. So now you're ready to close it off. You got it to the tightness you want it to be. You simply just flip it over. That locks it in place. Loosen it. Pull the tool away. And then take your cutters. Cut about a quarter of an inch on either side. Close that. Just push these down so you just like so. And there's your hose clamp. Well, the clamp tight tool is a very versatile tool that you can use for many situations. For more information and how to videos, go to their website, clamptighttools.com. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Hey, if you have a product that you would like to have featured on television, just contact Jeff at masterstv.com and we'll have so much more again next week on Performance TV.